Hey everybody, this is Dr. August de Oliveira. I apologize in advance for the low quality video. Um, I sold this printer to my buddy Shay Tolbert and um, I wanted to make him a little video on how to use it. And in the same regard, I think it'd be kind of cool to go over um, LCD printers in dentistry and what they're all about and sort of the nuances uh, about these printers. Now there's lots of different ones on the market. There's the Wanhow, there's the Frozen. Um, all sorts of different ones. This one is called the AnyCubic Photon, and I'd have to say it's one of the better ones on the market. Um, two hallmarks of these printers. One, they've got great prices. So they average in price anywhere between $500 and $750 uh, compared to the Moonray or Form 2, uh, which are between $3,500 and $4,000. Um, this is a great printer. Now, a lot of people ask me, should I just get this printer and not get any other one? Um, I'm gonna say no. I think this is a great second printer, um, and I'll talk about why in just a little bit. Um, the other hallmark of these is that um, the Form 2 uses a small uh, laser beam to cure pixel by pixel in 140 micron pixels your entire model. A DLP printer uses a film projector to, uh, to print out sort of layer by layer. Um, so the speed of DLP is about three times that of the Form 2 or an SLA type printer. Um, the LCD has a lot of similarities um, to the DLP printer in that it does print one sheet at a time. So whether you're putting one model or five models, they're all gonna print out at the same time. But the difference is these use LCD screens, basically an iPhone screen to print out your model instead of a DLP projector. What that means is, one, they can be a lot cheaper, but two, they do have a tendency of burning out. So the LCD that's inside of this printer should be regarded um, as a disposable product. Basically, use it, burn it out, throw it out, get another one. When you crack your iPhone screen, how much does it cost to replace? About 100 bucks, right? The reason why is these screens are about 60 bucks each. So if your LCD happens to go out, not the end of the world, you can order them from a number of places and um, just reinstall it. So I just wanted to go over a little bit of printer anatomy. First, this thing here is called the build plate. The build plate's where your model is going to be built on. Typically, LCD printers have very small build plates, which is the reason why I think this should be a secondary printer, and you should get a Moonray or a Form 2 printer as your primary printer as a dentist. Um, one benefit of this printer with the smaller build plate than the Form 2 and Moonray is that it prints at 50 microns in the XY. And so what that means is the smallest detail it can print is 50 microns, which is pretty incredible. Um, I'm selling this because I kind of like another printer better called the Frozen Shuffle, um, which I've seen it print die models and implant analog models um, better than some $20,000 printers. So I think that these are a great extra printer uh, because the bill plate's so small. Sometimes you can't even fit an entire arch on it unless you print vertically and that's a whole other story. Um, so this is the build plate. This is called the resin tank. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this out. And so you can see here, it's got a clear sheet on the bottom and a bunch of screws. So what this stuff is called is FAP. And don't ask me, uh, what the chemical name is, but it's clear Teflon tape. And these do need to be replaced. It's You can buy it um, from a store called FEP Shop at FEPshop.com. That's F-E-P shop.com. Go ahead and unscrew these little hex bolts and you put it on, pop it on. There's lots of videos online all about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this guy on. And I just, sorry, I'm getting it from a weird angle. Here we go. Um, go ahead and turn it on. It's kind of loud, okay? So we'll go ahead and boot this up. One thing that this really does well is that it's got a little LCD screen, and I'm sorry, you can't really see the LCD screen, but we've got a button that says print. We've got some 
for Z-axis settings um, and other things on it. So it's really got a cool touch screen. So what I wanted to do is show you something that's really, really important to all printers in general. However, the more expensive printers like the Form 2 and the Moonray are self-leveling. Meaning if we print layer on layer on layer, if our build plate is kind of off, um, those layers won't print out. So these you have to manually calibrate the Z axis or the little motor that moves the build platform up and down. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go through that process. Um, Shay, later on, I'm going to post another video on the software of the Photon and give you guys some pointers. One thing that's really cool about the Photon is the Photon takes USB drives. So rather than going through wireless or going through a printer cable, you use the software, the, the, any Cubic Photon software, I forget what it's called, um, and you slice it, put it on this little disc, plug it in, and access it through the touch screen. So let me just kind of go over leveling. So if we take the resin vat out, this is the LCD screen. Really important to keep it clean. I just use a two by two to make sure there is no smudges. So what you wanna do is just take a piece of paper, this is regular printer paper, and put it over the top. And, sorry, as I kinda of lean over here, I'm gonna go ahead and go into this middle button, which is settings, oops, sorry, tools, Z-axis, and we're gonna hit the little home button. So you can see here, this is now moving down. Name of the game is a printer, uh, a piece of paper is about 50 microns in thickness. So you want the build plate to hit the paper and sort of give you resistance uniformly around the build plate. So it's taking its own sweet time. It's gonna go uh, down there uh, eventually. Now, different printers have different ways of doing this, and so if you have a WANHOW, if you have a Frozen, there's going to be a different protocol on setting this Z-axis homing. Um, one thing that is really cool about the Frozen printer and the AnyCubic uh, printer is that whenever you load a file in, the build plate automatically goes down to home and gets started. Now, there's even some very expensive printers on the market that don't do that. And if you forget to home it, then it just sits there in air and moves up and down and you end up with a big slab of yucky resin. Okay, so we went ahead and we put this down. You can see here that my, print, my paper is held on in the corner, but it's not down all the way. So what I wanna do now is go ahead and loosen up the bolt. And pretty nice, um, the AnyCubic Photon actually just has one bolt. And so we're gonna let that go here and make this kind of loose and kind of hold it down. And then we're gonna tighten it. And that's actually not down all the way. So we're going to play with the settings here. And if you look on the screen, they have different increments in which this can go down. So we're just gonna kind of hit this a couple of times and see if we can get this to go down enough so that my paper is snug. And at this point here, it is pretty snug. And so now what we wanna do, make sure this is tight, and then we are going to set this as our Z to be zero. Hit yes. And now if we go to Z axis, I'm gonna move this up a little bit. And then I'm gonna hit home. And sometimes when you set the Z axis, it kind of goes up a little bit. And so in this case, things worked out pretty good. It didn't do that. But I'm just going to go ahead and loosen the bolt and push it down really hard so that my paper is nice and snug underneath it. And we can go ahead and raise that up a couple of times. Now, one thing to note um, about LCD printers in general is you need to fill this with resin. I typically fill it up about halfway. Um, there's no right or wrong answer. One thing that's cool about some of the LCD printers now, they've incorporated spouts. All right, so we're just gonna keep raising this up
until we have enough room to put our resin vat back in. Okay, we can just now put our resin vat back in. We want to tighten these little bolts here. All right, Chase, so the next video, I'm gonna show you how to use the software. That from anycubic.com. Um, so I just wanna go over a few basic things. So this is your build plate, and this is just a version of a software called Chi2 Slice, Slicer, which is C-H-I-T-U Slicer, which is open source. So if you don't have an Anycubic Photon printer, don't worry, just download this and configure it to the size of your build plate. But let's go ahead and open that back up. Oh, here it is right here, sorry. All right, so let's go over a couple things. We're gonna import a file. So we're gonna hit click open file. And in this case, let's go ahead and import some teeth to a denture. And so this is our teeth for a future denture that I'm doing. Now, if you look over here to the right, this is your resin profiles. Now, I've been banned from the uh, Dental Anycubic Photon website. Kind of funny, uh, before I actually even joined it, I was banned from it. So, pretty cool. Uh, but I believe on that site, uh, you can uh, download uh, different profiles for the different dental resins out there. I don't have those, Shay. So, you're going to get the initial um, material profile that uh, I've included, but go ahead and get it from those guys and you can use all the different software. So there's different ways of positioning it. Um, so if you go ahead and right click, you can rotate your model. If you left click, you can uh, just kind of move that model around. So in this case here, we're going to be designing this for a denture. Um, so I don't want to mess with the undersurface of those teeth. I'm gonna go ahead and support this with another one. Now you can also, for fine tuning, go ahead and click rotate, and then you can then move the model in increments. I prefer to do this this way. I have a lot more control of my model. So once we've kind of positioned the model where things should be, we can go ahead and add supports. Now, as a rule, I tend to center everything in the center of the build plate. That is where the LCD is strongest. Um, we do have some die off on the edges. Um, so this is a one model deal for me. I know I've seen guys put a whole bunch of vertical models, uh, which is great, uh, but I personally find I get more accuracy in the center of the build plate. So let's add supports to this model. See this little thing with an upside down, I guess that's an Eiffel Tower. Go and click on it. You have light, medium, and heavy. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit medium and click on auto support. So what it does is it gives you supports underneath um, your teeth, but it also gives you a raft. And I really like the raft. You can get rid of the raft um, underneath here. You can just go for platform or full. What this is gonna do is give you an entire raft over the same. Um, not really into that, so I don't really want to do that. So um, this is cool. Now we're ready to slice. Now what I find personally is that um, if I slice it directly to the USB drive, it doesn't always happen. So I'm gonna slice to my desktop and go ahead and put that on it. And so we're gonna call this Shay, and this saves it as a slicer file. So hit save. It's gonna slice things. And we're gonna hit okay. Now I'm going to manually take that and move it over here to my USB drive. So we have a few going on here. So let's see what this one is or this one. Yeah, let's do this one here. And let me find Shay. Where'd you go, man?
Okay, so now we're going to take this drive and uh, put it into. Now, another thing, guys, if you want, uh, within the Photon software, you could also save this as an STL. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and call this Upper Teeth Frozen and save this because I'm going to print this later on also on my phone. Okay, so we're back at the computer. We have our USB drive that we've sliced the file from the AnyCubic software. And now we're going to show you how to go ahead and print. So you just insert this into the USB drive. Let me scoot this a little bit over and look at the printer. Um, imagine we fill this up with resin. I don't have resin in it just because I don't want to have to clean it up and send it to you. Um, but we would go on the touch screen to print and we would find the file somewhere down there there it is I'm gonna go ahead and click your print um, it's hard to see but you see a little tooth here um, and we hit play so you'll notice the build plate is going down automatically so we're gonna go ahead and get this started so Shay hope you enjoy this printer everyone else I hope you uh, learned a few things about these LCD printers there are more and more coming on the market really almost every month. Um, and I think this is a great second printer. So thanks guys.